Okay, so a lot of you guys are starting the, the first three animals, okay, which are the turtle, right? And we said a bird-based animal, which could be, it could be a flamingo, it could be owl, it could be chicken, okay, in that category, okay? And then your other animal is your, um, your cat. Um, if you wanna do, we also mentioned flamingo, it can be chicken, crane, flamingo for the bird option. Um, when you're done with those three, I would highly recommend that you also sketch and try to do like a dog, a gopher, a beaver, a weasel, a possum, okay, something else, because it's a little bit extra for you and a little bit more of a challenge, but you only have to do the three. Okay, if you look up on the class blog, I already have lectures up there, demos, okay, to talk about part of our process. So I'm going to go over the process right now with you, and I want to talk a little bit about mistakes that students usually start to make from a beginning standpoint, okay? Mistake number one, which I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, but the recorder wasn't on, is a lot of students jump into a finished product in the first hour or two hours of sketching. That's not the way that we work. And that's not the way I want to train you to work. What I want you to, what I'm trying to train you to do is give you an understanding of producing small, quick, rough sketches, thinking about silhouette shapes and visual reads, and about embellishment, distortion, and exaggeration of shape, then come back to that and we can draw over that and then create characters. So your goal is to try to create a page of sketches of turtles, sketches of cats, and so on. And what I always discover, because this happens to me whenever I draw, my first quarter to half a page of sketches sucks. It's usually my brain getting used to the shapes, trying to figure out the direction I want to go in. And then in that process, I start problem solving, okay? So what I thought I'd do today is I want to quickly go over a couple basics. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. It's been a long week of lectures. Um, so I thought I'd just start sketching for you up here really quickly. Okay, so as you guys start working on the turtles, what you want to do is some of you might do something like this and you start with pretty much your first idea of what a turtle is going to be. You know a turtle has a shell, you know he's going to have a head that comes out, he might have a little bit of a base, he has sort of an under, underneath shell, might have a foot that comes out, and you might get something like this. Okay, So that right there is an acceptable, outstanding first sketch for your turtle. There's part of our process, there's nothing right or wrong about it. It's about you going forward and exploring. As far as getting into the silhouette of this, if you want to do them pure black, you can. I don't like to do pure black all the time. I do it for some things. But there are a lot of times what I like to do is I just come back on another layer. And what I do is I take the airbrush tool and I put a grade underneath it like this. And then once I get that gradient under there, I come in and I take my eraser, which takes me a couple minutes. And then I come along the outside and I erase any of the overspray like that. So this took me about 30 seconds to come in and do that really quick and to get rid of the overspray. Okay, um, there is another option if you want in Sketchbook that if you do this, if you do lines that connect, So you have that. If you take your bucket tool, you can fill it full of paint. You can do that. Now, I don't like doing that. I think it works for some areas of silhouettes and it does work for characters. The reason that I like doing this is I still have my line sketches in there. I have my mass to see what I'm doing. And that for me is pivotal because it, it's not that it's detail, it just helps me look at a shape that I made and then go into another direction. Okay. So one of the first things I wanted to mention to you is that the way our brains work with shape recognition is you're going to put out a very standard shape when you first try something. It's just the way that we work. So you're gonna go in there, you're gonna think about having, you know, sort of these rounded heads. You're gonna think about squashing and stretching a little bit. And then you might go into a turtle, you might try something a little bit different where you start pushing out a shell, where you start putting something at a little bit of an angle 
like this. Then if I come into here and I put a foot in here, I have a little foot there. Maybe I have a little foot in the back like this. So what happened on my second pass now, I've sort of changed and I have a different flow to part of my shape there. You see that? Okay. So this is what I like to refer to shape number one here. That's just sort of my basic throw. That's my brain getting used to what I'm putting down on the paper. What happened here in my next pass? Does anybody know? What I do that was a little bit different? Exactly, squats and stretch. So let me show you on an overlay exactly what I stretched. Number one, I took that circle shape and I extended it a little bit more like this when I squashed it. Another thing that I did is on this base turtle here, I had a horizontal line going across for the base of the shell. And then if you look here, I had another horizontal line for the underneath. And I had the feet on a horizontal line, right? What I did here is now I put an angle line like that. And then I even angled, just trying to get a little bit of an angle there. And then I have a little bit more, I have sort of a sloping angle here, okay? Those little angles and those slopes change part of the feel of the character and they take me into a different pathway, okay? So as you're sketching, one of the things that I want you to do is to think about how do you squash and stretch your shapes a little bit, okay? So what happens if I did something like this? Oops, not in the red. Let me go back to blue. What happens if I get in here and then I really try to push my shell down like this? What if my shell comes up, then drops down, and there's a little bit of a lip overhang like that? And then what if I get in here? What if I have the underneath connector of the shell look something like that? And then if I come in here and I, I look at that head shape and I'm like, hey, I like that head shape, but maybe I make it a little smaller than a little bit wider on one end. And then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to toss the neck in like that. And then I come back and then I, I figure out how to squeeze the feet in there. So I might have a large foot coming out about here. I might have another foot coming into about here. Same thing in the back. I have a foot back there. And I have another foot in the back. Okay. So do you see the transition now into that? What I did on that sketch is I basically created, I have an angle in here, okay? I have the head tilting at a different angle. I have the shell a little bit outweighed where it's a little heavier on one side. It's a little bit, there's more area on this side, so to speak. I have the, the head in a nice gesture that's in there. Okay, um, that's at an angle. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out ways to break the basic pattern, which is a standard pattern that always comes from your brain. Okay, so and then before I proceed, what I'm going to do really quick is let me move these over. Oops, select, go to lasso. Let me grab these real quick. And I'm going to move them over. Hold on. Let me merge them all, make sure they're on the same. Uh-oh. Let me back up there for a minute. I see what I did. I drew one on one layer with tone, and um, that's okay. Here, I'm just going to merge them all into one so it's easier for me to move them real quick. I'm going to move this guy over there and make sure I have enough room. What I'm going to do then is come back over, take my airbrush tool, and I'm just going to quickly go back brush a little bit of value under there. And I'm not rendering, am I? No rendering should be happening right now. I'm going on what I call a page of exploration studies, looking at the shapes, trying to figure out how to squash and stretch and how to come up with something that's working very well. This is a process that we do. And sometimes in art and in process, your first page is not a successful page, is it? Those of you that have had me before. A lot of times, you don't get to that successful page until you've done two or three pages of sketching. That's just the way it works. And that right there is the difference between an illustrator and a designer. An illustrator takes their first idea that they have and they render the heck out of it. And by doing that, 
one of the negatives that you do is you use techniques of rendering to cover up your mistakes. In fact, a lot of people that render and come from an illustrative background, when they get into figure drawing, they really don't understand too much about line quality and gesture because they're used to having the ability to go in and quickly cover up their mistakes by rendering and putting values and gradients on there. We can't do that here, can we? No. I am forcing you, thank you, I'm forcing you to have to look at what's happening in terms of the design and to get used to it, okay? So this right here is sort of my first approach in taking a basic shape, distorting it and seeing where I end up, okay? Let me give you my second approach and I hope this helps you. One of the things I realized from drawing a lot is that our brains automatically set parameters for us to work in. And it becomes really hard for us to leave those parameters. So I already had students working on silhouette sketches and a lot of students came up to me already, especially in the class after this environment design. And this is what they tell me, Phil, I'm drawing a character or an environment and I'm doing the same thing over and over. How many of you guys say that, right? A lot of you do. This is how you get out of that. Okay, you're doing that because your brain is putting you in its safety zone. Why does your brain put you in its safety zone? It makes you do what is safe. It doesn't want you to do anything because you are, as an artist, you're afraid to fail. You're afraid to try something new and different to see where it goes. So this is what you do, and I love doing this. I do it in my sketchbook all the time. Come over here on your next pass of turtles and do this. Line only. That's it. Create a series of shapes. Go back and force yourself to draw a turtle in that shape. And then do completely opposite of that. Come back to that and then do this. That's it. That's my starting shape, okay? And come back to that. Go totally extreme with it. There, you see that? Okay, so the point of this is now I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone and I'm trying to do something that's gonna be totally different that I never thought I would do before and I'm doing that by just creating simple lines, simple drawings and trying to figure out where my shapes are gonna be. I don't have any detail on there, do I? I just have simple, look at the difference, look at the visual reads between them. And by the way, I'm picky, so I'm looking at this one and I already hate this guy because he was too much like the basic. I want something that's different. Okay, so how about this one? On this one, what if I do a small shell and I do a large head like that, okay? So let's keep going. So this is where I talk to myself. I like a crazy person, but I figure out what am I doing with my shapes and how do I make them a little different. So if I go back and look at my shapes right here, one of the things I'm noticing is the majority of my shapes are doing this. They are heavy on the bottom and they taper up to the top, right? Okay, so how do I go opposite of that? What would happen if I come over here and I go small on the, on the bottom and I come up here and I taper heavy to the top? And I do that. Totally different shape, right? And then I come in here and I put something in there like that. So the benefit of doing this is now I have found a way for me to leave the standard sketch and to go into another ballpark that my brain was not comfortable with going into, okay? So by doing this, it allows me to come up with new ideas and new variants that I never thought would be possible. So what I'll do is I'll just fill up a whole entire page based off of this. I'll just sit, I don't have to, I don't have to even get into the drawing. I just start messing around with some of the shapes, trying to really get a feel of what is working and what's not working. What if I had something like this, where I have a shell on top, I have a shell on the bottom, I know I have a little 
round loop where the head comes out of. And then I could come over here and then maybe I do something like this. Okay. And then also when you look at your reference, okay, um, turtles also under their under night, underside shell tend to have a little round area where their feet can come out sometimes like that, and like that. Okay. So do you see that shape there? I really like that shape right there. That shape is 20 times better than where I started down here. You see the difference? So here's a golden little point of what Phil's trying to teach you right now, is that the more of these little progressions that you do, what's happening is your brain is forcing itself to think outside of the box. When you think outside of the box, every little failure or drawing you do that doesn't look right is not a failure. It's actually a stepping stone that's gonna lead you to a more successful drawing later. It gets you to think about distorting and bending shapes, contorting elements, and going on a different pathway that you didn't think before was possible. So let me do another sketch here. Maybe on this one, I'm gonna throw in my turtle shell and make it really tall, and then maybe I round it, and then maybe he has an underneath shell that comes up like this. And then where his head shape is here, maybe his head shape comes downward. So maybe it wraps around and he has a head ball that's down like this. And it wraps in like that. And then I could come down in here and figure out where I'm gonna throw my feet on this guy. Okay? I end up having a different stylized fun character. So look at the last two sketches that I did. Do you see a sense of energy in those? Of movement and flow and look at where I started with basic my basic sucks now I don't like my basic anymore that's where my brain first started so what I can do is I'm gonna come into that immediately and I'm just gonna take a lasso I'm gonna go over my basic and I'm gonna delete it because I'm really picky for some of you you might not you don't have to do that you might want to leave it there to remind yourself of where you started okay so I'm gonna sit up here, I'm just gonna turn the recorder on, I'm gonna keep sketching. And then I'm gonna fill up my shapes here. I'm gonna go back and paint over a couple of these. I'm gonna go back and take a look at the ones that I really like. Because even as I like the last two that I did, I still like this one right here, down on the bottom. This one right here has promise to me. This one, I wanna go back and add up the shapes a little bit. And I'm thinking, looking at a couple of these angular ones, what if I try to go really abstract? I might get something that's totally different. Another thought that I had, some of my sketches here are coming out at a side angle. What if I rotate my turtle a little bit more into a three quarter angle and do the same thing? So I'm gonna go back in and then sketch while you guys are working. I just wanted to give you more of a positive starting point. And your goal is basically, you know, do what I did just right here and then fill it full of, of tone, and that's it. And then go do your cats. I do the same thing with a cat. I look at my basic body shape, and then I start thinking about small cats, big cats, heavy cats, long cats, overweight cats, and then I find an approach that starts to work that's problem solving and giving me a better idea, and then I finish it up from there. Any questions? Okay, good. All right, so I'm just gonna continue here and just take my base sketches that are really simple and just keep adding to them. As I'm doing this, I sort of made a little bit of a mistake using the airbrush tool in Sketchbook Pro. It works great for rendering, but it really doesn't work as well the way I wanted it to work. So what I ended up fixing part of this lecture here at the end, went back, took my line sketches that I make and I actually redid them um, in Photoshop. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to see. So simple shapes, keep them easy, and just try something different, you know? Try to think out of the box. I was already walking around in a couple of my classes this term, watching students work, and one of the first things I noticed is that, you know, I, I mentioned this like 20 times in class and then I lecture, and then students resort back to the same thing that they want to do. And you have to go back 
look at part of the lecture and you have to come back and realize what are the similarities you're doing in your drawing process. If you don't do that, you're going to limit yourself to always drawing and designing and you're not going to improve. And I know it's difficult. I just had this conversation with a friend of mine who works in the industry, the difference between people who had, have good draftsman skills that can draw and then people that can design. And being a designer is you really playing with shape and being critical on yourself to the point where you're like, man, I've already done that. And okay, this really sucks. And how do I change it? How do I think into another direction? You have to be willing to push yourself into those avenues and to see what comes out of your designs. Um, and if you do that, in the beginning, it is hard. Because like I said, a lot of you have started drawing as, as kids, but you haven't spent any time becoming a designer. And it's easy to draw and look and trace. And even as kids, we start to learn from drawing from contour line and copying, um, you know. And But, man, it's just really hard. That's the one thing that irks me a little bit when I look at a lot of colleges and uh, college instructors is everyone's talking about drawing, but no one's talking about how to become a designer, you know. And in design, you know, like I said, there's lots of people with draftsmanship skills, but there are a lot of people – they can't design from those skills and they can't, you know, part of designing is being a problem solver, looking at your weaknesses. Like, I just hate this drawing I just did there before. So what if I change it? I want to go in the other direction. Let me round the shape. Let me have a, uh, you know, a round shape against a hard edge shape. Maybe that'll point me into another direction. So look at your rough little sketches and decide what isn't working. Go back and tweak it, make it a little bit better. There's no governing rules or laws with this. It's just simple sketching and having fun. And when you see something that isn't quite working, you know, you got to go in there and tweak it. All right. I think I'm going to stop right here because this is the part where I was going in with the airbrush tool and I just fixed this in Photoshop to make it look nicer so we can jump ahead really quick. So what I did really quick is I stopped and I came back here. You know, I really like Sketchbook Pro for the sketching quality of the pencil, but to fill a very light um, gradient pass underneath. I really don't like their airbrush tool as much. I just don't have as much control. So what I did is I took my line drawing here and I just brought it into Photoshop really quick and I, it just reads a lot easier. So I just picked a very light blue, okay? And uh, again, it's like in the lower 10 to 20% area. And the purpose of that is, is after you do your sketch of your character, by putting that light blue under there, it allows me to see the visual shape of the character. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for me to continue forward when I, when I want to work more. So this is definitely my outcome from the earlier sketching. I just brought it into Photoshop to, to alter it because what I was doing a little bit earlier in the demo, I really didn't like the look of that airbrush tool. The airbrush tool works great inside um, uh, Sketchbook Pro when you're doing textures and stuff, but for base color, it, I, I don't like it. So anyway, here's my first pass. You know, there's about, you know, what, about 30 minutes of sketching there. And I have a good chunk of characters to work from. I could look at these and instantly, you know, I really like this guy right here. Um, sometimes what I do is I go along and I put maybe like a little check mark or a little red dot on the ones I want to work on. Uh, and I have lots of options that I can do right now, um, which is really cool. So uh, I really like this guy right here. It, it was sort of like a sea turtle, but I gave him some fins that were stretched out a little bit. Um, I like the shape of this guy right back here because he has this sort of nice sloping feel to him. And um, some of these guys, I liked his shell right here, but eh, I wanted to change him a little bit. I like this guy. He feels very young and fun. Um, and I sort of like the angled and the gesture of that guy. So, you know, the whole purpose of us doing these shape studies is that Already I have four to even possibly, I like this guy too, and I sort of like that guy. I have about five different versions I could go with right now. And so what I kept reiterating in class is this is what separates character designers and artists um, from illustrators, is that we just don't come up with one idea and illustrate it out of our heads. I now can take these versions here and enlarge them on a separate page, and then I can start working from there. So I came in really quick. I paused the recorder, and what I did is I copied and pasted the ones that I really like there. And look at that. I pasted them up above. And when you look at them, there's a nice flow. There's some different variants. 
inside their silhouettes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck these aside real quick, and I'm going to come back to these in part two, and I'm going to draw over them and turn them into characters. Before I do that, I also want to do uh, some sketches of some anthropomorphic or standing turtles that might be moving around on like back legs. So these sketches were just my first pass at turtles down on all four. Let's take it to another level of designing and see how we come up with the next pass. All right, so now we're gonna move forward. And I increase this recording speed a little bit here by about 100%. I'm gonna work on vertical standing turtles or anthropomorphic turtles. Um, and you got to be careful here because you don't want to end up, you know, like Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse are basically human bodies with heads that are different. I don't want that. I want my turtle. If I'm going to go vertical with the turtle, I still want them to have the feet of a turtle. I want those heavy, you know, legs. I want the arms to feel heavy. I want the head to feel like it's coming out of the turtle shell itself. And there has to be some attributes that are really working. So, um, this is a lot harder than doing the turtle on all fours. So if you're having a difficult time getting the turtle on all four legs uh, on the base of a ground plane, then don't do this. This is going to be a little bit different because now you're having to think about, you know, a little bit of a line of action. You're having to think about the weight of the turtle. Is it standing? You know, you have to get a good feel of what the arms are doing. Are they breaking the silhouette? Are they inside the silhouette? All these little elements come out into the way that you're sketching these really simple shapes. But as I mentioned before, on my turtles that were on the ground, just keep really simple shapes. Go to another one. You don't have to feel like everything is a, is a basic success. My goal is to fill a page, take the ones that I like that are working, put them on another page, and then go from there. You know, and that's welcome to being a, you know, entry-level designer thinking about what are better visual reads and what shape language is working and what shape language is not working, you know? So have fun with it. Um, one of the things I did notice when sketching these, to me there was an, two points of connection on the turtle shell. There's the upper shell, the lower shell, and the way the net comes out of it. So when the shells, when the turtle's down on all four, you don't really notice that as much. Now you're gonna notice that a lot more because in a vertical, standing position the turtle tends to be almost like it a little bit of a three-quarter where now we can see under the shell a lot easier so that affects the way we see the arms and the hands and the way the whole basic design sort of comes together okay so on a couple of these now that i did that top row i'm just going to sketch a little bit larger and then i just scale them down and at home i really like to do this when i do a demo in class sometimes it's a little bit harder because one of the secrets for me when I draw is listening to music. So if I can listen to music and I get in this mode, this flowing mode, I'm able to sketch a little bit easier versus when I'm in class, one of the downsides of me playing music is that I have to go back and voice over my sketch and drawing because YouTube will take out any sound that's back there that I don't have permission to put in. Okay, so that's just the way that it is. So just have fun, throw out your shapes, see what you come up with. There's no right or wrong answer. So all I'm doing right now is I'm working on this sketch sequence of anthropomorphic sort of vertical standing turtles just to push the shapes. And I just started sketching. So what I'm going to do is I like to turn these off. I actually like to do this really rough. It gives me a better feel just to open up a little bit. It just allows me to get in there and get some really nice sort of circle shapes and figure out how I want to push shapes. So just, you know, again, just have fun with it. The one, there's a, a real huge attribute towards drawing rough and keeping your drawings uh, nice and loose is that it just feels fun, you know? Um, and it, there's a certain amount of energy that comes off into your sketches sometimes that doesn't when you're working really tight, per se, you know? So, um, I mean, I, I know I, I wanted to put up some series on... Uh, sketching in the sketchbook up here on YouTube. That's going to be my next idea coming up soon because I, I really do draw in my sketchbook quite a bit. And what's really important to me is to really try to push to you guys the importance of just getting in there and sketching rough and loose and seeing what you come up with because you never know 
what the end result's gonna be. And this is the, really part of the fun part of drawing is figuring out how to just be really loose and rough with something and see what it turns into, you know? And the cool thing about being rough like this too is you're not guaranteed into, you can fail in a sketch if that makes sense. You're supposed to fail. A huge part of drawing is, like we talked about already, it's working in steps and in sequences and working from thumbnails and through roughs and, and back and forth, you know? There's no instant, you know, instant gratification and exact answer on what is going to work or what's not going to work, you know? Part of your goal is just to get out there and really have some fun, think about what's taking place. So here, just trying to square off the shell a little bit more. I do like the idea of this shell being very low cut and the legs just sort of being really huge and thick and sort of protruding outward. It's just like barely any room for, you know, walking because, you know, the turtle legs are pretty small, right? So there, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, maybe this front of, that's the underneath of the shell. And then maybe the back of the shell comes up. So then the turtle's head sort of comes up here. Maybe this one's a lot longer and thinner. And then the turtle shell sort of wraps on the back like so. And, um, and hands, it's nice to break the arms or the hands away from part of the body. It helps accentuate. Now I don't have the turtle doing anything because I'm just starting an initial sketches where I'm just searching for shapes. So one of the things I might do is think of that hand just sort of resting, that arm resting on the side here. Now, technically speaking, maybe his arm's up a little bit and he's like, hey, you over there, come up, come back here, right? And the front arms tend to be a little bit longer, but in a rough sketch stage, you know, your job is just to have fun with it and not have to feel like you're completely locked into something right now, right? Just have fun. See where the sketch takes you. See what you end up with. All right, so that's pretty cool. Another version there. So let me jump over here real quick, and then I'll get another one going. On this one, I'm going to try to see if I can't raise the shell maybe a teeny bit more and really try to see if I can get in here and squash and stretch the weight. I have like a really like obese, short, squatty turtle with a real funky shell. So maybe part of his shell is like this. Maybe the back part overlaps a little bit. And the legs, I just want the legs to feel so heavy it's like super thick. And then since I have that super heavy feel happening on this guy, Maybe his neck needs to be really thin, like super thin there. And then instead of being super long like the others, it's going to be short and squatty, so it comes up a little bit like this. Maybe he's part like a Malaysian turtle or from another country somewhere. Okay. And then his body shape's working in there. You can feel that center line. Feel the weight in him there. And let me see if I, I'm going to come over. I want to try to make his arms just a little bit long. And then where the forearm comes, it maybe just gets really heavy. Like that, if that makes sense. A little bit like that. Okay. Same thing here. Arm's going to come out. And then want that forearm to be really sort of heavy set feel to the turtle. Now, if you're just starting out, don't get into this and 
don't sketch turtles in a in a vertical or, or anthropomorphic format if you can't master the base format, right? If you're not getting your rough drawing to work, you got to go back. Oh, I hate it when the eraser does that. You got to go back to simplicity and start off somewhere. You know, you know, a huge part of drawing is building up drawings to build confidence in your own self and the way that you're working. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Those are three of my sketches here. Let me pause. I'm just going to shrink them down and put them on my page. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn on the other page. It's up above right there. Let me select this page. Command all. I'm going to come over here. Let's scale them down real quick. Oops. Wrong page. My bad. Here we go. Command all. And then we're going to scale these guys down. Get them to fit in there. Got that guy. He might have to fit in about there because he's a little tall. That's pretty good on him right about there. Okay. Um, now I'm looking at it. Even as it shrinks a little bit, I'm looking. I'm like, ah, I don't like his, uh, sorry. I don't like his face right here at all. So let me take off. It's too, too thick. So that's a little bit better. I'm not trying to put a smile on there, and it's starting to look like a weird smile. So, give him a different face. It sort of matches his body a little bit like that, okay? And I'll do a couple more here, and then I'm going to go, again, pull these into Photoshop and do the same thing. So, let me just move them a little bit closer to each other so I can fit a couple more silhouettes on here. this off again and merge that layer with the layer down below so there it's all in one and then I'm going to come over here so I'm going to look at what I've been doing already and sort of make an assessment of maybe just my notes to myself some of them are same body size what if I really push the shell out so I need to do a little bit more squash and stretch on some of my shapes right now to really get them to be a little bit more appealing and you know like I was mentioning before I've said this a hundred thousand times your first page always sucks. Your first page is you just breaking into the rhythm and the flow of something. And once you pass that first page, you get so much better in your, in your design approach, you know. All right, so let me turn these off. Put a new layer up here, and then let's just sketch. So now I'm just curious. What if I have, like, a really, really heavy body it just feels like it's, I'm going to try to tilt the opening. And it's all, just trying to make it like this huge shell body. Sketchbook Pro. I hope they just do an update and fix this. It just bugs me how sometimes the pencil works and then other times it doesn't. Um, what if he had more of the C foot? More like the flipper foot like that. On there. Now, technically, you wouldn't be standing like this with his other flipper going this way. That's how I wanted to draw it. Technically speaking, if he's facing towards, he's going to have the foot like this, and then the other flipper will be going in the back in direction or off to the side, if that makes sense. But that's all right for right now. It's just a rough sketch, right? Maybe the shell just has to feel huge. then 
thing coming out of the shell. that large flipper shape. All right, eh, sort of like him, but then I don't. So just turn him off, do a couple more. See what I end up with. On this one, I want to take the angle from vertical to sideways like this and see what I could maybe come up with in terms of shell, you know. What if my character looks like he's standing and he has this crooked angle to him? Changes the pose a little bit. Might make it a little bit more exciting, a little different. could be a little bit longer. About there on the other side, so it should be coming out a little bit more. doing this. Let's see what I end up with. So I'm trying to draw that shell at this angle and then have it split correctly. So that would be where that would represent the bottom of the shell versus the top. Like that at all. I'm just ending up with the same design, which is very similar. So I need to find a way to break out of my rhythm and get into something else. All right, let's go for another option here. See what we can come up with. I have the shell on the bottom, the separate, I have an indication that there's a shell on the back side here, I have the underneath, the top. So the bad drawing that I did before forced me to really think about 
pushing the shapes a little bit more in this, tapering them, pinching them, embellishing, squatching, and stretching just a little bit more on this. And I already like what's happening in this drawing. There's a lot more flow to it. There's more of a curve, sort of gesture line. Um, I want there to be like a little Adam's apple here or a little fold in the skin, like a little goiter. Um, maybe the character is a little bit older. It's just, the shape is so much more readable than how it was before. It's cool. So, remember what I just mentioned, stepping stones. Bad drawings are stepping stones. They really are. You have to get the bad drawings out to get the good drawings to come forward. I like this a little bit better because I feel like I'm squashing the shape a little bit more. It's like a nice teardrop shape in here. You feel that? I mean, I like that. That's cool. I also like this head. There's like that seventh vertical vertebrae, and then there's a little bit of a secondary, like, um, Adam's apple right there on the turtle. So that that's cool to me. I like that. That came out a little bit better than the last one I just did before. So let's just keep doing, keep knocking out a couple more and see where we end up. All right, I'm back. So I took those large sketches that I was just doing a couple minutes ago, the ones that look like this, just the rough sketches. I put them together, and this is what I have now. I have that rough page, okay, which is looking pretty cool. I got some couple variations in there that I like. And again, I'm not spending more than just a couple minutes on the shapes, as you saw in the demo there. Um, and then what I did is I brought that into Photoshop really quick. And in Photoshop, there it is. And then I put a little bit of light tone underneath. That way I can see the separation and what's happening. So I'm immediately looking at these and to go over the ones that I like that I want to pick and do something with. Um, I really like uh, this guy right here. I like what's happening with him. Um, I want to tweak this guy a little bit. I like that old man sort of slunched over head feel, but I got to tweak his shape a little bit more. I definitely like this guy right here quite a bit. I also like that guy and I like this guy right here. So I have some good variations there. I got a couple that I could work off. So what I'm going to do is take those five, put them onto one page, um, just like my others. And we'll give me one sec here. Let me do that. All right, so what I did is I pasted them on my other Photoshop page. So remember, I had these five that I really liked. Now, next to those, I have these five that I like. Okay, so um, notice the line changed a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I still have the silhouette read. That's all that matters. However, though, I didn't mean for them all to be the same height. I had some different uh, adjustments that I wanted to do. So I'm going to tweak those right now. And so I'm going to move this guy over a little bit more in my lineup, put him up over here. Um, this guy wanted to be much larger. He's, I don't even know if I have enough room to get him large, but I want him to be a little bit bigger, like so, okay? Um, this guy back here, he was much larger when I drew him, and I want to keep that, that size back to sort of like the original drawing a little bit, see if I can't. He might be hard to fit. Um, I might have to scale one of these down. This guy ended up a little bit wider for my old man, I wanted him to be a little bit more narrower, about like so. Okay, and then let's move him back over. He's all right, I guess. He's okay. And now, oops, with him, let's get him down right about there. Now I can make this guy a little bit larger because I wanted him to feel a lot heavier. You know, maybe about, about there. Okay, there. So um, that's it. So now I have a good shape arrangement. I got a good lineup there to work off of. Um, and I'm going to go forward from that. Those are my favorite five. So after I rearranged them around a little bit, moved them in, uh, moved these guys up on top like that, you know, I, I have a great progression to move forward for. So I spent 40 minutes of time searching shape, having fun, and trying to figure out some different variances and variables instead of going with just the same idea that pops in my head the first time and look at what I have. I have something really cool to work off. Of. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take these and then I'm going to start uh, drawing rough line and sketching some character concepts based off of my silhouette studies that I have right in front of me. Okay. All right, guys. So have fun, work on this and just, you know, don't be intimidated. Just 
couple little quick reviews of what I did. If you find yourself going in one direction, it looks the same, stop, go the opposite direction, take a break in between, uh, look at reference, just don't look at, you know, drawing things out of your head. Reference is key to you building up off of other ideas and thinking up other strategies and approaches to coming up with better designs, okay? Have fun.